I am Susan Kennedy of Pretty Peaceful. Thank you for joining me today as I show you how to make the modern bohemian blanket, crochet blanket. Um, this uh, was the second pattern I ever designed. And uh, I think I published it, I made the blanket in 2013 and published the pattern in 2014. Um, and then in 2015, it was in Simply Crochet Magazine. So you may have seen that picture to bring you here to this video. Um, I was so excited about this. It, it came out right when my third baby was born. It was the first pattern I had published. It really got me going on my career. So this like this blanket has a special place in my heart. <laughs> and uh, I'm gonna show you this one here, this big modern bohemia blanket. Um, this I made for my uh, book, Crochet Southwest Spirit. Um, it is huge. It's a really big blanket. Um, it's about 57 by 78 inches, which is 145 by 198 centimeters. Um, and for this beautiful blanket, I used a local wool to me here in Southwest Colorado from Four Corners Yarns, which is from the Four Corners Fiber Collective. And they're in the Arizona corner of the Four Corners. I'm in Colorado, <laughs> so we're pretty close neighbors. And they use uh, Navajo churro wool and merino wool from local farms around here, including on the Navajo Nation. So they support rural and indigenous artists who are really out in the middle of nowhere. And uh, <laughs> I just want to show you this gorgeous yarn. It's Four Corners Yarns. Google it. It's beautiful. This is the High Desert Heathered Yarn. But you can use any yarn you like for this blanket. Um, today I'm going to be showing you a, a yarn with Lily Sugar, Sugar and Cream Cotton Yarn. I'm going to zoom in here a little bit. I noticed this blanket's really wrinkly. <laughs> I probably should have blocked it, but... It's been in my closet since our beautiful photo shoot for the book. Um, so if you don't have Crochet Southwest Spirit yet, check it out in your local bookstore or on Amazon. So this blanket is crocheted in a few different pieces. You can make several different versions of this. Really, you can put the puzzle pieces together however you want. Um, in my original version, there's one kind of center diamond to... I believe I called them wide half diamonds in this pattern. In the book, they're called um, end triangles, <laughs> just because I thought that was a little bit easier. Um, and then some side triangles or narrow half diamonds, I think I called those originally. But in this, uh, this blanket actually has three diamonds in the middle. So you can choose if you want just one diamond in the middle or if you want to like stretch it out and make three diamonds in the middle here. I know. It's hard to see on my little coffee table here. <laughs> uh, there's the end with the fringe. And then we have one end triangle or wide half diamond, two side triangles or narrow half diamonds. We have a, what I'm calling a blunted diamond here. The diamond in the middle just keeps going. And then another blunted diamond, another end triangle, and then this beautiful fringe. So I'm gonna show you how to make all of this. Don't uh, worry if that sounds complicated. <laughs> I made a little mini version so we can see it all at once here. So the blanket is made in, in four different pieces. We have the, the diamond in the center. That's gonna go in the very center of your blanket. Um, and then on the end of the blanket, we have kind of a half version of that to make a square end. Um, and then we fill in the blanks on the sides with these little half diamonds. So it's kind of whether it's cut in half the long way or cut in half the short way. And then you just keep on adding on. Um, this is what uh, I'm calling the blunted diamonds here. And I'll show you how to make that. Basically it's the same thing as the middle diamond, but you have to leave off the last little block of double crochet stitches at the top of the triangle here so that the pieces fit together properly. So um, that's the only difference is the last round and I'll show you that later. Um, and we keep on building up. We can put another one of these <laughs> here. I'm gonna have, still have to do the last round of the blunted diamond I'm gonna show you. But uh, anyway, these are the pieces. 
So let's start with the center diamond here. Then I'll show you how to make this diamond, how to do that last round, skipping that top one. Um, then I'll show you this half version of that, which is basically the same thing, but you just stop halfway each time, only do half a round. And then I'll show you this one, which is the same thing, but just half a round over here. So this is a really good blanket for scraps, to use up little scraps, especially in the, um, in the beginning rounds, like tiny little balls of yarn are fine for this one, especially for those first two rounds. So to start the center diamond, or what I've called the full diamond in the original pattern, this is gonna be the very center of your blanket. Make a slip knot, um, put your yarn on your hook, and then we're gonna chain seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now we're gonna uh, double crochet into the fourth chain from the hook, and that's gonna count as our first double crochet. I know um, most times a chain three would stand for a double crochet, but to me that ends up getting a little squashed just in the construction of this blanket. It gets a little lost. So we're gonna use a chain four as our double crochets. So we're gonna double crochet into the fourth chain from the hook, um, using US terms here. Double crochet into the next chain until you get to the end. So that's one, two, three more double crochets. So we have a little block of basically five double crochets here, and that's what this blanket is, is made of, um, is just blocks of double crochet. I don't know if I can zoom in anymore. <laughs> so that first chain four counts as a stitch, and then we have one, two, three, four more regular double crochets. So we're gonna be building little blocks of this in the round. Um, that's really what, I kinda wanted to make something different, but simple, um, and it's all double crochets worked in the round. It's just, you know, these blocks of five double crochets. So now we're going to build another block around this. This is round one of the um, full diamond or center diamond is done. So let's start round two. We're going to do the same thing, chain seven. And when I chain the fourth one, I like to pinch it and then do five, six, seven. So then I know that I can um, double crochet into that fourth chain from the hook just where I'm pinching it. Makes it a little bit faster. So double crochet into the fourth chain from the hook and the next three chains. One, two, and three. Okay, so now we have another block of five double crochet stitches, including that first chain four. One, two, three, four, five. So now we're gonna um, join these two together, and you just kind of bring it together. You don't have to twist or anything, and slip stitch to that first block. I think that's really the slip knot from round one. So now we have two blocks joined together, and we're gonna make kind of like a little cross shape. We're gonna put another block here, another block here, and another block here. So it's gonna look like, now I lost my center diamond here. We're making, that was round one, we already did that, now we're just gonna put blocks all around. And then round two, we're gonna put blocks all around that, just add one block everywhere, and keep going around and around until it's as big as you like. So I think for, um, I forgot to write it down how many rounds um, my big blanket is. But you basically just keep going around until your blanket is, your diamond is as wide as your, you want your blanket to be. So this here I think is only one, two, three, four, five, six, seven rounds. I think my big blanket was like 31 rounds or something like that. So <clears throat> let's start our next block for round two, our second block of round two. Um, I like to do a chainless starting double crochet because um, I just find it easier to work into, so I'm going to show you that. You, you pull up a loop um, about as high as a double crochet stitch. Put your finger on top to keep that loop from moving anywhere. Wrap the yarn around the hook, and then you kind of anchor it by putting the hook into that stitch. Yarn over, pull the yarn through, and now it's just like a double crochet stitch. You have three loops on the hook. Leave your finger there on top of the hook. Yarn over, pull through two loops, yarn over, pull through two more loops. And so that's your first double crochet stitch. Otherwise you can chain four, um, or even chain three if you want to, but I recommend a chain four. 
Then we're going to double crochet into the next three stitches. One, two, three. So now we have four of the, the five double crochet stitches we need, but we want to get back down here so we can make the next block over here. So we're going to chain three and then slip stitch to the next stitch. You can just grab one loop, any loop you can down there. That one's a little hard to, to crochet into, in my opinion. So now we have another block of um, two, uh, of five double crochet stitches. So we kind of have half a round two done. We're going to rotate the work 180 degrees and basically do the same thing. Make a block here and make a block here. And then we'll be done with round two. So we're going to chain seven, three, four, pinch number four, five, six, seven. Crochet into the one you pinched, and then the next three chains. And then we're just going to attach it to the block here by slip stitching on the top of the chain three. Here we have another little block of five double crochet done. Now we're just going to do the last one on the top here. I'll show you that chainless starting double crochet again. Pull up the loop, yarn around the hook, into the stitch where you joined, yarn over and pull it through, yarn over, pull through two loops, then you can finally let go of your finger, yarn over and pull through the last two loops. To me that's a lot easier to crochet into than a, um, a chain three or a chain four. Then we'll um, crochet into the Next three stitches. Okay, and normally we would do like the chain four and attach it, but since this is the last block of the round, I'm just gonna double crochet into that last stitch. So now we finished our block of five. And I'm gonna fasten off. I think it looks really cute when you have this little plus sign in the middle with just two rounds. So I, I like to change colors every two rounds. Um, sometimes uh, I like to change colors after every round, you know, if you're using up scraps, just do, do what you have enough of. So now on that full diamond, we made our little plus sign uh, for round one and two, and now we're going to work on round three, and all the rounds after that are kind of the same. You'll get, get the hang of it after that. So let's see, maybe this little turquoise yarn here, um, I'll add on. I'm using Lily Sugar and Cream Cotton for this little sample. It's what I made my first Modern Bohemian Blanket and a little baby blanket. Um, I love this yarn, it stays bright forever. And it just, it feels a little ropey in the skein, <laughs> but um, it softens up just buttery soft after time. If you, if you use the item and keep washing it and using it, it's just oh, lovely. So to start round three, I'm going to attach the yarn here at the bottom of this little arm of our cross shape. And we're going to chain seven and build the block here, build the block here, build the block here, keep going around. So for round three and all the other rounds, kind of whatever shape you have, just join the yarn at the, the side here. And just like we started round two, chain seven. Double crochet into the fourth chain from the hook and the next three chains. So I forgot to mention, you can get the written pattern for this blanket um, in my book, Crochet Southwest Spirit, and uh, starting May 2023. Um, you can also find it on Ravelry.com and Lovecrafts.com. Um, you can find the links to those from my website, prettypeaceful.com. Um, and also I run a nonprofit Etsy uh, fundraising shop for a, a nonprofit called the Kentucky Birth Coalition that um, works to help birthing families in Kentucky. So we made our first block. I was kind of talking through that. <laughs> but you just attach it to the next block. You do your chainless starting double crochet or chain three or four. And then double crochet into the next four stitches here. Okay. 
And then we're just gonna attach it to the previous round with a slip stitch. Attach it to that chainless starting double crochet, or this would be your chain four. Try to get under both loops. Sometimes I don't really, and you can also try to crochet over your ends. That makes it a little bit more convenient. Get them tacked down for when you weave them in. Now we're gonna start the top block here. I'm gonna do a chainless standing double crochet, or you could chain three or four. And then double crochet into the next three stitches. And then chain three, do a slip stitch. To me, that's about the, the same height as a chain four with a little slip stitch in there. So it's works for me. And then double crochet into the next four stitches here the previous row. It's kind of working into chains, so this is a little bit trickier to try to figure out, um, you know, where they line up because you're crocheting into the bottom of chains, but um, just take your time. Okay, now we need to finish this block, but we need to get back down here, so we're going to chain three, slip stitch to the next stitch, So we're kind of halfway done with the round here. We're going to turn 180 degrees and do the same thing. Chain seven, make our block here, make a block here, make a block here, make a block here. And then I'll show you how to carry your color over to the next um, round without fastening off, which is convenient because this blanket, <laughs> it's great for using up scraps, but it does have a lot of ends. That's one of those things. And I love color work. It's just, you, you have to, you have to um, weave in the ends unless you're using a, a self-striping yarn, which um, I also love. <laughs> but, uh, you know, try to weave them in as you go. I, I, you know, don't have a lot of patience. I can weave them in for about an hour and then I'm kind of, want to get back to my hook and crochet something else, so. <laughs> okay, so we made that block by chaining seven, double crocheting the fourth chain from the hook, double crocheting into the next three chains. Now we're gonna attach it here. And when you slip stitch here, you can go under, you know, usually I just grab one loop of that um, top of the chain three, but you can take the time and go under both loops. It probably looks a little bit better. <laughs> um, chain three or four, or do a chainless starring double crochet to make that first stitch, double crochet into the next four stitches. And then we'll slip stitch to this next block here. Okay, now chainless starting double crochet or chain three or four. Double crochet into the next three stitches. Chain three. Slip stitch to that next stitch to finish the block. And then we'll make our last block. Okay, and we're gonna double crochet into the next four here. One, two, three, four. Now, um, if you're gonna fasten off, you can just put another double crochet here and fasten off. But if you want to carry your color over to the next round so you don't have to cut it, chain three, slip stitch to that next stitch to bring you down there, and then slip stitch in these next five stitches to get over to where we're going to begin. Round, uh, that, let's see, one, two, three, that'll be round four. <laughs> Now try not to be too tight on these slip stitches because you are going to have to work into them in the next round. For me, I, I have a tight tension. It's easy for me to get a little too tight there. Okay, so that is round one, two, three. You can count the blocks this way. You can count the blocks that way to figure out how many rounds you have. And the only reason that's important, I mean, just keep going until you get the size you like. But these side um, triangle pieces, 
um, have to be one round less than the rest of your pieces to make them fit together. So I'll show you how to start round four. It's kind of the same way we started um, all the other rounds. We're gonna chain seven, four, pinch number four, and make our block here at the end, just double crochet into fourth stitch in the next three chains, the fourth chain from the hook. And slip stitch to that next block. So there's our first block of round four done. So it's kind of like this peach one here. So I like to change every uh, change colors every two rounds. Round four after that, everything's gonna be the same. Um, just adding on more blocks. And working your way around. I do like to end the, the last round of each of the pieces of the blanket in the same color. Yarn, like I'm using this um, Ecru color of sugar and cream cotton, because when you join these pieces, I think it helps to hide the seam if you if you do use the same color for that. And for this blanket, I'm going to use the border, the border, the centers, the fringe are all going to be this kind of ivory color. So that is the central diamond. You just keep on going till your blankets as wide, uh, your diamonds as wide as you want your blanket to be. So. Uh, anytime you have two diamonds next to each other, of these full ones, one of them you have to do the last round without uh, making that top block so that these two can fit together properly. And then, you know, this one joins in there and you, your blanket will fit together <laughs> correctly. And so, these are the blunted diamonds. These weren't in my original pattern because it really only had one central diamond in it. Um, but it's as if you strung a few of the little baby blankets together. This is really my original idea for this blanket. I just never got around to making it for like eight, eight years until eight years later. So um, I'm gonna show you how to do this last round, whatever your last round will be for these blunted diamonds. Um, we're gonna join the yarn just like we normally do over here and kind of at that rightmost edge of the diamond shape or cross shape. Okay, and we're gonna chain seven to make that block. Double crochet into the fourth chain from the hook. Double crochet into the next three chains. I have to say, if you have purchased this pattern, thank you so much for your support. I really appreciate it. And, and we've raised so much money for the um, Kentucky Birth Coalition. This, this blanket has just always been my favorite. I love making these. Um, it's, you know, once you get in the hang of it, you can just keep going, keep going. And um, they come together really quickly, I think. Um, I I just started this one, <laughs> the, all these pieces I made just yesterday, really. So um, I was just showing you the last round here um, of some of these, but it's pretty quick once you get in the groove of it. So we've made two blocks. We're gonna work all the way up to the top and then fasten off right here. And um, then join again on the other side. So we're gonna fasten off without making that topmost block. And cut the yarn and um, rejoin just on the other side of that top block right here. So if you're really a stickler about uh, <laughs> not wanting to weave in a lot of ends, you could do each, you know, this side all in one bit and this side all in one bit. But just for simplicity, I started this round like all the other rounds um, by joining the yarn at that right-hand side. But... So when I do weave in the ends, I should just mention, I, I like to just weave this end basically back and forth. I'll probably bring this one up and weave it back and forth across the same block a couple of times um, because these blocks are, you don't have like big swaths of fabric of the same color to 
weave a yarn in into. I just like to go back and forth across the block a couple times. And um, <laughs> I have to say, I have learned that from experience because my first uh, bohemian blanket I made came apart because I didn't weave in my ends well enough. So, um, and I was trying to weave them kind of in the stair shape. Um, so going back and forth across the blocks uh, works better for me. I also accidentally felted <laughs> one of these bohemian blankets. But now it's out in our camper keeping our feet warm when we're camping. But uh, that was the one from the magazine, actually, uh, wool yarn. And I know you're not supposed to put it in the dryer, but um, I kind of had to. I had three little boys. <laughs> Sometimes you really got to use uh, hot water on some stuff. But Okay, so I made it all the way to this top block. I'm going to slip stitch to this block here. So we've got part of the round done, but we're going to skip this top one here. So I'm going to fasten off and then reattach the yarn. Right here at this side of the block. And then double crochet into the next four. Just keep going as if you were as if you had made a block up there. So you just keep going around and around. You get to this end, turn the work, chain seven, make a new block, cut off, uh, cut the yarn here after you finish this block here and rejoin here and work back down to there. So this is what I'm calling the blunted diamond. And um, however many wide diamonds you have, like the full central ones, you'll need one of these on each side. Um, so, and then you, you could put another um, another wide diamond up there. You can keep going as, as, as long as you want. Just make sure your, your puzzle pieces are gonna fit together. So now I'm gonna show you how to make the end um, diamond piece for the short ends of your blanket. And it, we're just really doing the same thing we were doing for the wide diamonds, but just a half of a round. So find some yarn here. You really can use very small bits, um, especially for these, this is the big wide diamond on the short ends of the blanket and the, the smaller little ones um, for the sides of the blanket. You can use very small scraps for the center. So you want to use your, your little scraps in the beginning because the, you know, as you go on, each round requires a little bit more yarn than the last one because you're going to have a few more blocks. So to start the this one, we're going to chain seven. I like to pinch that fourth chain, five, six, seven. Double crochet into the fourth chain from the hook. Double crochet into the next three chains. Okay, so we have our round one is complete. Now to start round two, I'm going to chain seven. And double crochet into the fourth chain from the hook and the next three chains. Okay, then I'm going to slip stitch to that first block right at the beginning where the slip knot was. And chain will start in double crochet or chain three or four. Make that top block here. Double crochet into the next three chains, which are kind of your starting chains. Next three stitches. <clears throat> and then chain three. Slip stitch down here. Okay, so now we have most of it done. We just have to turn our work 180 degrees, chain seven. And double crochet into the fourth chain from the hook. Uh, I think in the original version of the pattern, I had a chain six and double crochet in the third chain from the hook, but to me that chain just kept getting lost. So I made it a little taller and you know, 
the Modern Bohemian Baby Blanket <laughs> was the second pair I ever published. The first one just being like a moss stitch stripes kind of thing. Uh, and I was really inexperienced. Uh, even, even as a crocheter, I was a pretty new crocheter. Uh, when I started designing, because <laughs> I didn't learn until I was in my 30s. So, we're going to fasten off the yarn, and that is round two of the wide half diamond or um, end triangle, depending on which which <laughs> version of the pattern you're looking at. It's both things. It's going to go on the end of the blanket, and it is the wider half kind of diamond. So, to start round three of the... Um, this kind of piece for the end of your blanket, the short end of your blanket. I'm going to attach the yarn kind of at the rightmost arm over here of this kind of half cross shape, just like the, the big central diamond we made. And chain seven and make that first block of five double crochet. And you just keep on going around and around um, to do this. So join it to that first block. Now, and unfortunately, there's no way to carry the yarn <laughs> for this one. These side triangles, you do have to cut after every round, even if you're doing like two rounds of the same color, because you can't really get the yarn all the way back over here to start again. Um, but, you know, that's the price you got to pay for a beautiful blanket sometimes. <laughs> So I think you get the idea on this. You keep going over, make the block here, and when you're making that last block, you have to kind of turn your work, chain seven, and make that last block, and then fasten off. So that's the the wide half diamond or end triangle. Um, now I'll show you how to make the final piece, which is the little tiny side triangles, which I had previous, previously called narrow half diamonds. So um, I'm going to get a tiny little bit of yarn to start the center here. And we make the first block the same way. Make a slip knot, put it on the hook, chain seven. Double crochet in the fourth chain from the hook. And the next three chains. Okay, and that is round one done. The round one is the same for all the pieces. Now, um, I'm going to fasten off. It's, it may seem a little ridiculous to fasten off after only one, uh, but that's just, how I, that's just how I do it. So, um, oops. I'm going to fasten off round one. Theoretically, you could flip your work, but I don't like seeing the back of the stitches pretty much anywhere in the blanket. I mean, the back doesn't look bad. Um, but I like to keep the work facing up, facing me the whole time. So I'm going to attach the yarn for round two a little bit differently than we, we have for the other pieces. I'm going to attach it um, right here at the first stitch where the slip knot was, and I'm going to make a block on top right here. So attach the yarn with a slip stitch, you know, a chainless starting double crochet or a chain three or four. I'm going to double crochet into the next three stitches. And then I'm going to chain three and slip stitch to the next stitch. Okay, so now we have two blocks on top of each other. And I'm going to make a block over here next. So we're going to turn our work chain seven, double crochet into the fourth chain from the hook, double crochet into the next three chains, we're going to slip stitch to this block here, and now we're going to create the last block of round two right here, so Chain the starting double crochet or chain three or four. Double crochet into the next four and fasten off. 
So I'm catching my tail here to crochet over it a little bit. Okay, so that's round two of the um, side triangle or narrow half diamond. <laughs> Sorry for changing the name, but I think side triangle is more accurate of what it is because, um, you know, they're just, they just just go along the sides of the blanket. I don't know why I didn't think of that in the first place. <laughs> so we have round two done. And now we'll attach the yarn for round three. Let's see what color to pick here. I'm going to get us purple. So we're going to put the yarn on the hook with the slip knot and we're really going to be building it like this we'll do a block here 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 and here so i'm going to attach the yarn kind of at the this edge chain the starting double crochet or chain three or four You could potentially crochet over this end this way, but I, uh, for some reason I never do. <laughs> I don't know why. So double crochet into the next three stitches. Chain three, slip stitch to the next one. So you see there's kind of like these uphill blocks and downhill blocks. And um, you just got to make sure that you're, you know, making a block of five double crochet every time. You're not missing that last chain to get into like over here, which can be kind of easy to miss sometimes. So we have four, we'll chain three, slip stitch the next stitch. Now to keep going, we have to turn it 180 degrees, chain seven, and finish that block. So I think you catch the drift now um, of how these pieces are made. You can kind of fit, it, fit them together as you're going along. And like last night, I kind of did all the little center round one and two at the same time and just kept adding on until I feel like I had a big enough piece to show you to demonstrate the blanket, how it works here. So you keep going, make another block there, make another block there, fasten off. Uh, you can't really carry the yarn for this shape either. Um, now I'm going to show you how to join the pieces, now that you got the idea of, of the basic shapes. Um, I like to join these pieces with a mattress stitch. Maybe I'll zoom out for a second just to show you. You got to choose kind of two pieces that you're going to put together. I haven't really decided on the layout <laughs> of this blanket yet. Um, um, maybe I'll use a different color here. So you're going to have one of those wide end triangles or um, wide half diamonds and you're going to join it to one of those end pieces. So we're going to count our rounds, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven rounds here. So we should have six rounds on this one. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yes. So uh, we can fit them together. I'm going to get a tapestry needle and a um, piece of thread to join here. So I like to take like an arm, you know, an arm length of, of yarn. You don't want to be tempted to take two, like a super long one you're pulling through a lot, but especially if you're using wool, that yarn can kind of fray as it gets drawn through. Um, so don't go too, nothing too crazy here. So we're going to start at this edge and we're going to mattress stitch along both of these ends um, to join the blocks together. We're going to put one stitch in each stitch, just zigzagging back and forth. We're going to tack the corner here where the edge of one block meets this kind of deeper corner over here. And we're going to keep, keep going all, all along. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit here. Um, you could crochet your pieces together if you prefer. I like a really clean um, look when I'm joining. So to me, it's worth it to stitch. You know, I love sewing, um, like this kind of sewing. 
So I drew it through one stitch and I'm gonna tie a knot with the end that's over here just to really anchor it. You do a little bit of tugging on the seam, just kind of pull it tight. So I'm just gonna gently knot the end to kind of anchor it on that piece. Now I'm gonna put one stitch into each of these five. So the last one I have to pick up is here. It's kind of that puny chain three or chain four. It's a little, little tangle of yarn ends going on. <laughs> I probably should have woven in some ends to get them out of the way here. Okay, so I'm gonna insert the needle from the back of the work up through just the one loop of the stitch, kind of the back loop only, I guess. And this is optional. You can grab whatever loop you want. Really, um, inserting the hook the needle from the back of the work up through one loop and then go to the other side from the back of the work to the front just grabbing one loop I'm trying to keep the little yarn ends out of the way you know what i probably should have used a different color yarn to show you i realize this is kind of like white on white <laughs> but it, you should choose the, the same color yarn for the last round of each piece and use that color to um to join it as well. So we're just gonna go stitch for stitch, matching up the blocks. So I'm going into the last of the five stitches of this block here on this side. And the last of the stitches here. Okay, so it kind of looks like a messy little zigzag now. After each block, I like to kind of lay my finger over it and just pull the seam and it's gonna kind of close up. It's hard, it's hard to like do it and show you at the same time. But don't pull too tight because sometimes I can make a crazy hole, but it really does make a pretty invisible seam once you keep going. So now we're going to anchor the, um, the next stitch we're going into is kind of like the slip stitch where those blocks were joined. And then go into that corner of the block here. And I like to tighten it at that point too. Whenever you're joining the corners, just give it a little tug. So now kind of same thing, back and forth, going from one side to the other, grabbing one loop of each stitch. And then after each block, just gently pull it tight. And I like to keep my finger over it to keep the seam flat. Otherwise, if you pull, sometimes it can pucker um, and I didn't block these pieces yet. I, they'll leave it out. <laughs> Sewing, I think, really helps straighten out the edge. So, um, to me, I didn't uh, feel like it's necessary to block these. But, uh, plus, our power was out, so I couldn't use our st <laughs> the steamer, which I would normally use for cotton uh, blocking. Uh, so, I've got kind of one more block joined. I'm going to put my finger over it and... Just give it a little tug. So once we get all the way to the top of sewing these two blocks together, if you wanna keep adding blocks, you can just line the next one up and go back that way. Um, and you can, you know, when you have blocks like this, you can work extra little stitches if you feel like it needs more reinforcement. So um, now I'll show you how to do the border on the blanket. The border is a really simple one. It is just a few rounds of single crochet. So this is what it looks like after we joined all of our pieces using the mattress stitch. And I'll get started on the border in a second here, but I just wanna show you the, the, what the border looks like on my, my big blanket here. Since this blanket is so big, I worked seven rounds of single crochet. I'll zoom in a little bit here. Just seven rounds, worked in a continuous spiral. And I did not flip the blanket after each round, but if you're working on a smaller blanket, like the sample um, that we're making here, you may wanna flip the blanket after each round just to prevent your corners from getting kind of warped. Um, on a big blanket, it's less noticeable. And then I'll show you how to do this really fun 
macrame fringe that um, really transforms your blanket into a magic carpet. <laughs> and a lot of people say the fringe is optional to me. I love fringe so much. The fringe is absolutely required on this one, but uh, I know a lot of people have strong feelings about fringe. <laughs> and you can do what you want to your blanket. Uh, you could also do uh, tassels, four tassels if you want. So for the main blanket, I had used a five millimeter hook. That's just what was recommended on the label uh, for the yarn I'm using. But for the border, I am going to use a four millimeter hook. Just because, um, I know personally on my attention, my, my borders can get kind of wavy. Uh, actually, I can't find my four millimeter hook at the moment. So <laughs> I'm just gonna get started with the five millimeter hook here. And I'll crochet kind of tightly. So we're gonna attach the yarn on the hook with a slip knot. And I like to start on the short ends, one of the short ends of the blanket here, working into these double crochet stitches. So just attach it somewhere a little bit near the corner with a slip stitch, chain one, and then we're gonna single crochet into each stitch evenly around. So that means we're putting one, single crochet into each stitch along the short end of the blanket. And we'll work three single crochet into the corner stitch. So that was one, two, and this third one, that's kind of the first stitch along our long edge of the blanket here. So we'll be crocheting into Kind of the sides of double crochet. So we're going to do one single crochet stitch into the top of the double crochet stitch and our second single crochet stitch into the bottom of the double crochet here. And then I like to put um, a single crochet right where the seam is. Sometimes we got to fill in that gap there. And then we'll put one single crochet into each half of this double crochet stitch. and just continue on around. Single crocheting evenly around and three stitches in the corner. And I like to work my borders just in a continuous spiral, kind of omigurumi style. Um, so when I get to where I started, I just single crochet into the single crochets and just keep going all the way around, three stitches in each corner. And this really gives the, the blanket really polished look it makes it last long so one single crochet into each stitch keep going around and I'm gonna keep going around a couple times maybe three or four times here and I'll come back and show you how to cut the fringe okay so I've worked a few rounds of border here three rounds and then I ran out of yarn <laughs> so I'm gonna choose this point uh, to just show you how to do the fringe here now for the fringe on a bigger blanket, I recommend cutting um, 18 inch long lengths of yarn. This is a pretty generous fringe. And for the smaller, like um, baby or kid size blankets, I recommend cutting 12 inches um, long fringe. So the way I like to cut my fringe, I like to wrap it around a book. And this book is about six inches wide, so if I wrap it around once, that'll give me 12 um, inches. So I'm gonna wrap it around, um, wrap the yarn around, wrap the yarn around. Let me zoom out a little bit. And then I'm gonna cut just once, and I'll end up with 12 inch long yarn strands. I think that'll be enough to show you here. How many um, strands of fringe you're gonna need depends on how wide your blanket is. <laughs> Unfortunately, I could not find my best scissors just now. I don't know where they went. But you really should find your best scissors to trim the fringe. So before I really trim much fringe, I'm gonna find my good ones. <laughs> so we are going to um, have three strands of yarn um, here um, on the end and the other bunches of fringe are going to have six strands of yarn. 
So, and we're going to go six strands of yarn, six strands of yarn all the way on down. So let's see if I have enough to show you a few bunches here. Okay. So I like to fold the length of yarn in half. Maybe I'll zoom in a little bit more here. And kind of find the corner stitch of the blanket right at the corner. Insert your hook from the back of the work to the front and grab that doubled yarn kind of by its center and pull it through. Sometimes you gotta do it twice <laughs> because you're pulling such a big bundle through a pretty tiny stitch. So pull it through a little bit and then stick your fingers through the loop you made and pull it down and pull it tight. And I do like to tug on each little strand individually. Sometimes you get, I don't know if you can see that one little loop kind of poking up. So you gotta tug on each of them until that disappears. I think a little fuzz there. And there's our first uh, strand of fringe. Now we're gonna skip the next three stitches and insert our hook into the fourth one. So we're gonna skip one, two, three, Insert the hook from the back of the work to the front. Fold a um, bunch of six pieces of fringe in half. And grab that and pull it through. It's going to be kind of tricky. It's a lot of yarn to pull through at once. Just a couple inches to make a loop here. And then grab that yarn. Put the, tuck the yarn ends in and tighten the knot. This one looks pretty good, so I don't have to really uh, tighten each strand individually, maybe later. <laughs> then we're gonna skip the next three stitches. One, two, three, put the yarn on the fourth here. And add that next bundle of six strands of yarn. And you'll continue that way all the way down the blanket. And you can either um, just leave the fringe like this, kind of like long ponytails, or you can uh, do the macrame fringe option. Um, which let me add one more, one more bundle of fringe just to make the example here a little bit thicker. Let me add a couple more strands here. Okay, so I'll skip three stitches. One, two, three. Insert my hook from the back to the front. And I'll fold these six strands of yarn in half. And pull those through the stitch. Sometimes you miss one, you know, and you didn't pull them all through. I find it better to just start over <laughs> when that happens. Even it out. Okay, if I had just cut enough in the beginning, <laughs> would have been better, but I got impatient. So, fold it in half, insert the hook. Fold through a couple inches. And tuck the ends down in and tighten it. Okay, so now we have a couple bundles I can show you how to do the macrame knotting. So, we're going to tie these three on the end. Um, these three strands that were doubled, so now we have six strands. We're going to separate this next bunch of fringe into two, so six strands. And we're going to tie these together in just a square knot. Right over left and left over right. And we're going to tighten it up just so there's like about a finger width um, below the knot. I might tighten it a little bit tighter than that, but now I pulled it too tight. <laughs> uh, you may want to just not go so uh, tight all at once like I just did. Well, maybe we'll leave it. Okay, then we separate the next bundle of fringe in two, six strands on each side. And we'll tie the last six strands from this bundle with this bundle. And you know you can kind of put your finger there and tighten it up gently and then tie the second knot. Give that space. That one looks better. <laughs> I 
we have a little practice. But we're going to tie another knot so this one will kind of straighten out anyways. Then, same thing, we separate this bundle into two. Each should have uh, six strands. One, two, three, four, five, six. And we'll tie that with these six. Okay, so that's the first round of knots, and you'd continue along the blanket, adding fringe bundles and tying them. This one really is a little low, I'm gonna have to fix that later. <laughs> so you can leave it like that and just trim, trim your fringe um, if you want to. And when you trim the fringe, don't put a lot of tension on it and pull like that and cut it, because then when it bounces back a lot of times, it's too short. But use your sharpest scissors to trim it. Or what I like to do is tie a, a second row of knots here. So this one would not get a, a second knot because it's all by itself on the end. But tie another row of knots further down, kind of tying like a little mesh net. And I think that just makes it look bit cool. Uh, sometimes the little blankets only need one row of knots. Um, and sometimes... Uh, Bigger blankets, you could do several rows of knots and keep going. In that case, you want to start out with longer fringe, like 18 inches or maybe even longer. Okay, I think I missed one here. Let's see what happened. Okay, I'll tie this last knot here, and then I'll show you a close-up of the fringe on the other one again so you can kind of see how I tied those. And you can continue tying knots, as many rows of knots as you want. Uh, let's see, on this one here, my big blanket that I just love. I feel like this is a really a family heirloom <laughs> blanket. This yarn is just fantastic for corners yarns. So on this fringe, um, I actually only tied, uh, looks like one round of knots. So you can See, that looks pretty, I, I, you know, I'm pretty happy with that fringe. I like my fringe pretty long. You can trim it as short as you want. Um, and if you make this blanket, please uh, use hashtag modern bohemian blanket. You can tag me at pretty peaceful. I'd love to see your blankets. And you can, uh, if you're making this through my book, Crochet Southwest Spirit, you can use hashtag crochet southwest spirit and tag me at pretty peaceful crochet. Thank you so much for watching. Happy crocheting.